Hi, my name is JD Eppert. I'm our regional production manager with Bartlett Roofing. Um, I'm here with Weston, who's another one of our production employees. We're here on an install of ours in Nampa, Idaho, um, to go over our training process for midpoint inspections for the quality control reps. I'm gonna be treating him as a new quality control trainee um, and kind of show the interaction and, and pointing out to him um, how we go about things with our training process on the day of install. All right, so first things first, prior to install at the start of your day, you're gonna show up to the office, get with your uh, quality control manager. Um, he goes over, through, goes over all the jobs for that day. He'll divvy them out. Um, you will get your list of jobs on a work order and also your iPad. Your iPad's gonna be your best friend. After yeah. I get my jobs, what do I do? <laughs> okay, so after you get your jobs, um, on your work order, we have our sales rep. That's gonna be your field contact. Uh, we also use uh, social media app Slack. Um, first thing you're gonna wanna do is reach out to that sales rep, whether it's via Slack or calling them directly. Um, you're gonna want to let them know that you're on their way or on your way to the job site. Um, we like to have a kind of a smooth transition with the sales rep who's been working with the homeowner throughout the whole process and kind of an introduction for you so he can introduce you to the sales rep um, and get just a smooth handoff um, so the homeowner feels comfortable um, with the new employees they're meeting of Bartlett. All right, so now we're gonna bring in Michael Lostra um, to kind of talk about and point out the sales side of things and the handoff from their perspective to work with the quality control representatives and the homeowner. So thanks for coming to the job site today, Michael. Um, if you could explain your side of things from the, the sales side and the interaction with the quality control team so we can take care of our customers to the best of our abilities. Fantastic, so I'm Michael. I am uh, the director of training and I handle all the teaching of all the salespeople. And so basically the, the notion is that the sales staff's job, the project manager's job, is the liaison with the homeowner. They have the relationship, but they don't have the technical expertise that the QC people bring. Yes. So our notion is that we should be a team because we have the relationship and you have the technical expertise. So we bring our relationship to your technical expertise when we're sitting with the homeowners, we can say, hey, look, the QC guy knows everything that's going on on this project uh, as far as the actual construction goes. So if you have a question or a concern, you can reach out to the QC guy, he has the answer. We've got somebody who's an expert on the project, watching the project. Your home is in good hands, I guess, is what we're looking at. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. So I guess the big question then is, what do you need from us? We just want a smooth transition. We know the sales rep as a project manager, you've been working with the customer. Mm -hmm. You have that good rapport with them. So as a quality control rep being a new face to the homeowner, we would love uh, for us to tackle that together as an introduction to the homeowner if they're home. Um, just letting them know uh, that we're working closely together. No, it's, and, that's, and that's kind of, where we come at too. You're gonna to be on the project. My homeowner, who knows me, doesn't know any of the guys on his roof, and now there's another random guy in a Bartlett shirt wandering around. So our feeling is that the introduction to you, to the homeowner, is gonna be essential, because then the homeowner knows like who you are and why you're there. So there's a few things that we find essential um, from a sales perspective, a smooth handoff to the homeowner, I think, is part of it. But the other thing is, we've already been on site and we already know what the homeowner finds important in their yard because we've done that walk around several times and we've created that relationship. So when we get here in the morning, one of the first things we're going to want to do after introducing the QC person to the, to the homeowner is then we're going to want to walk the property with the QC rep and point out any of those things that, that the homeowner has already indicated to us are an important thing. Yeah, and from the quality control side of it, I love that because quality control reps, we're going from multiple job sites. So at times there might be some things we miss. So after that introduction, I think it's a great idea for the quality control rep and the project manager to walk around that job site because you as the sales rep, 
might know what personal items of the homeowner are valuable to them, um, whether it be birdhouses, um, specific plants that the homeowner really loves. So then we can point out and address those issues and take extra precautions to protect all the items on the job site. Right. Well, and beyond that, again, because you guys bring the technical expertise, you may see something that is going to present a specific and intricate challenge on the job that we didn't know about, and so we were unable to tell the homeowner about. And so now we're able to better equip the homeowner for any challenges today may face because it is a construction site and let's face it construction is kind of controlled chaos construction gets messy all right so we're going to jump to um as you arrive to the job prior to this you've already showed up to the office got your list of job sites from your quality control manager um, you've already found out who the sales rep is on those job sites you're managing, sent them a Slack um, or a phone call um, to try and coordinate the meeting up at the job site at the same time. So now we'll go over what you do right when you pull up to the job site. Um, before even getting out of your truck, you're going to want to pull up that job on the iPad, or if you have your physical copies, which I always loved, um, I'm more of a paper guy, so it's easier for me. Um, you're gonna check the work order. It's gonna tell you the whole scope of work, um, whether it's additional layers, if there is a, a redeck that, that needs to be done. Um, it's also gonna point out your shingle color, the drip edge color, um, which you cross reference this stuff with the material order. Um, and this work order, this is what the crew receives prior to coming to the job as well, correct? Yep. So we'll send this to the crew so the crew already knows the scope of work, but as a quality control rep and you help manage that job site, super important that you know. Right. Um, then you'll also want to pull up the carrier estimate or the exactimate, which is going to be a very fine detail of the scope of work that the insurance company is covering. And why this is important for the quality control rep is because on those carrier estimates or exactimate estimates, there are things called PWI items, which is paid when incurred. That means the insurance company is allowing us to usually give a code upgrade for the homeowner, which the most common thing is gonna be drip edge and ice and water shield. But they're saying they will not release those funds for us unless we get physical pictures of it. So just as a quality control rep, identifying what items are paid when incurred is a very important part of your job. So if the item previously existed on the home or we're installing it as a code upgrade, we have to get photo documentation to make sure that the insurance company pays those items? Yes. Okay. Something you're going to find from time to time is that your carrier is willing to pay for ice and water shield, but they're only willing to pay if it gets installed. PWI. If there's a PWI on your job, you need to be there when that goes down because they're going to need pictures that show that you actually, that we actually installed it paid when incurred. The most common PWI item is ice and water shield. Ice and water shield. When does ice and water shield go on a roof, JD? When do your crews start laying that down? After they tear off the roof? After they tear off the well, roof. <laughs> it's honestly. It, our crews will go ahead, they'll tear off the roof, they'll get all the debris cleared off that down to the decking because any loose shingles, any granules, um, slight things like that that are left on the roof can cause some ripples once mm -hmm. the shingles are, are laid. So they'll go ahead and clean that roof completely off um, and then go to start installing the underlayment system. Mm -hmm. So if you know that you have PWI on a job, you need to be there not only when they do the clean off, but when they first start the dry in, which is going to be typically an hour after a dry, uh, deck reveal, two hours? Uh, I would say typically probably around 11 to noon ish. Um, our crews, they like to tear off really fast, get it all cleared off. Um, then they kind of start to clean up. They might grab lunch and then start installing the ice and water shield and the underlayment. And you should, as the project manager, be in constant communication with your QC person. So you guys kind of have a feel for what the time frame looks like. So you can be back on the job for that next visit when they're laying that down so you can get pictures. Because again, 
we don't get paid unless we prove that we incurred the cost. And your photographs are gonna be essential for that. Especially if your QC guy has seven other jobs. Somebody would better be there to get those pictures. Yeah. And that somebody needs to be you. It's your job. Super important and I like that idea. And that's the whole point of the project manager and the quality control rep working together. Because like you said, quality control reps, they have multiple job sites they're going to. So if they aren't on that job site at the appropriate time due to some other problems arise on another job site, mm -hmm. that's where quality control will rely on the sales reps who's managing their projects um, to help us out and get those photos. Just so again, we can get all the funds released from those carriers. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, guys, we talk about you as a project manager. That means you need to manage your project. That's what that means. You need to be there. You can't assume that somebody else is gonna do it. You assume that if it's gonna get done, it gets done because you did it. So be there, do it. If we have extra people doing it, well, that just means for certain it's not gonna get missed. But if everybody else is busy or misses it, by God, it better not be you that missed it because you're the one that pays for it at the end of the day. You've pulled up to the job site now, you've gone over the work order, the exact amount, all that good stuff. You're gonna to wanna to hop out of your vehicle now um, to start your midpoint inspection and start identifying any problems, um, make sure the job site's protected. Um, you're gonna to wanna to do a, a thorough walk around of the house. Sounds good, let's go. Now JD, I understand that we work in the United States of America and here they put a lot of emphasis on safety. Is there anything we need to be aware of as far as OSHA standards go on these job sites with the crews or with ourselves? Absolutely, um, I would say from the ground, first thing you're gonna notice is the ladder. That ladder needs to be three rungs above that eave edge um, and preferably tied off. Um, the other big safety thing is gonna be a fall protection plan. If it is in a specific region that you're working in as a quality control rep, um, specifically Washington, um, every job site is required to have a fall protection plan and it's just a very basic thing um, with the job site address and just pointing out um, that we're taking all the safety we can for that specific address. Okay. Um, from the ground you can also look up to the roof and see if the crew is wearing their um, harnesses for fall protection. Okay. Um, you can check that out from the ground, but it will be also be super important once you hop on that roof to make sure that harness is not just, they're not just wearing it, but make sure it's anchored to that ridge line. Um, now these are federal OSHA standards and us as a general contractor want to make sure all of our crews are abiding by these things. Okay. Okay, so we've already gone over everything else prior to the job site. Now that you've hopped out of your truck, what we're going to do is start your midpoint inspection. Okay. Um, Easiest thing that can be done right on that overview page on the job in RoofLink. There will be a test, a midpoint inspection. You go ahead and click that, it'll open it up for you. So you've started your midpoint inspection. Um, you're gonna start your walk around. Part of those line items is tarps laid out, um, dumpster, how close it is to the garage, ladder safety and gutter protection. Um, so you're gonna walk around the house, you're gonna grab photos, um, of those tarps um, showing we protect the homeowner's property, not only just getting your own eyes on it, but documenting everything you're seeing and inputting it into that midpoint inspection. Okay, now am I only taking uh, photos of one tarp or can I take more photos for individual sections? How does that work? The more the better. Okay. You can never have too many photos. Some guys think maybe just get one or two and they're visually seeing it, knowing everything's protected but just we want everything your eyes see, we want as many photos as we can get to input into our system. Okay. Sound good. Sounds great. The expectation is that you're gonna be on your job on install day four times. The first time you're gonna show up, you're gonna introduce your QC man to your homeowner. Now in this case, the homeowners are out. So there is no introduction because there's nobody to introduce. After you've introduced your homeowner, then you wanna take your QC guy and you wanna do a walk around. The reason for this, obviously, as we talked about before, you know the property better than anybody else in the company. So it's your job to let the QC people know what things the homeowner finds important. Things like, well, if they've got yard decoration, in this case, he's a Marine. You better not break that. You're gonna have a fight with a Marine. Don't do that. 
He's got um, birdhouses that he's clearly put some effort into. You want to protect those things, and that's the sort of thing you should be alerting the QC people to. Uh, you'll come back um, three more times during the day. Once, once, uh, uh, once at the end of tear off, when the deck has been revealed, we want to make sure you're there to put a uh, third set of eyes on the deck. And then you should come back two more times after they've started shingling and once the job is done. So since this is our first visit, we're going to go ahead and do the walk around. So let's walk around. JD, what do you want your QC people to be watching for when they're doing the walk around with my sales guys? So like you pointed out, um, as a sales rep, you know what's important to the homeowners. Mm -hmm. So you're automatically look, pointing out to us, you know, either these plants are important to the homeowner, these birdhouses, like you mentioned, he's a Boise State fan. I know people in, in Idaho love their Boise State Broncos. So we wanna, you're, you're letting the quality control rep know we need to take those things from the quality control side, the things we're looking for is to make sure there is adequate enough tarps out to protect the property. Um, we're also looking for pre-existing damage, um, which is something maybe a sales rep is not so in tune with because it's super important because during the tear off, it does get really messy. So as a quality control rep, if we can spot pre-existing damage, document those photos just to protect ourselves um, for the midpoint inspection. Um, other things we're going to be looking for, um, air conditioning units, mm -hmm. not just putting tarps over those, but we want a solid piece of OSB over that because once material starts piling up on that, it can cause them to overheat, nails can get into them if they're running, um, and nobody wants to buy a homeowner a new AC unit. Well, it's really any protrusion from the house, right? I mean, a gas meter, um, a spigot, that sort of thing, anything that could get damaged by falling debris we want to be aware of. Right. Um, other things the quality control rep is going to have eyes on is the cruise dump trailer. Um, mm. Is it parked, how close it is parked to the garage, if they're protecting the garage, um, looking for ladders on gutters. Mm. Um, we absolutely hate that. Um, preferably if we can put them on a rake edge, that's what we want. Some houses like this one we're on now, the whole house is wrapped with gutters. So in those situations, we just want our crews to protect those gutters with a, whether it be a gutter guard, um, even a roll of underlayment in the gutter, just so that ladder isn't leaning on the gutter um, to prevent dents, scratches, um, just any type of damage to the gutters we want to avoid. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the last thing we want to have to do is buy new gutters because we didn't properly protect the gutters when we were doing the rest of the, of the property. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Well, let's go ahead and do a quick walk around and then uh, we'll take it from there. From the quality controls um, eyes, first thing I see on this house is right here in this corner. We have some pre-existing soffit damage. So at that point, I can bring that up to you as we're doing this walk through together. Um, you in turn can just double check with the homeowner. Just be like, hey, we noticed this pre-existing damage. Um, just want to make sure you're aware of it. So because um, a lot of common occurrences are uh, homeowners don't always know about their pre-existing damage but as soon as we put on a new roof their eyes are on every part of their house mm. anything we can do to just keep everybody updated on the same page um, during the whole installation process mm -hmm. makes everybody life easier um, once the roof is completed right. and that makes sense from a sales perspective you want to make sure that anything that can be moved away from the uh, eave edges gets moved away and, and, and really it doesn't necessarily need to be everything of value everything of importance uh, the the homeowner has things in their yard decorations that maybe they aren't terribly expensive but the homeowner put them there because the homeowner finds value in them for something whether it's cost or beauty doesn't matter as their rep you should be looking out for them and trying to help protect their things teamwork makes a dream work hell yeah <laughs> is this how you want the trailer to look? Is this what it should be? What is it you're looking for as far as how the trailer gets parked on the, on the property? Um, I just want to make, as quality control rep, I'm making sure it's not touching the garage. Okay. Um, usually a good one to two foot distance is, is good. That's what we like. That way it makes it easier for the crew when they are tearing off those shingles, they can just throw them directly into the dumpster. 
we like tarps tacked on to the roof and dropped in front of the garage. Um, uh -huh. And this is just to prevent scuff marks. Cause as you can see, our crews do their best to throw their shingles in the dumpster, but with wind or just, they never played baseball and don't know how to throw a shingle. <laughs> Sometimes they fall on the ground or they'll scuff the garage. They won't necessarily break it, dent it, but scuff marks. Um, just tacking a tarp from the decking to hang down in front of that garage, that's Bartlett standard. Okay, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. And that actually brings an interesting question to mind. If we show up on the job ahead of you and we notice, for instance, that there is no tarp hanging down, do you want us to wait till you get there, text you and let you know, or get up and talk to the crew? What's the protocol? Um, I think both are good, just to double down. Um, as long as the sale, you as a sales rep feel comfortable and confident enough to address the crew, um, yes, I would, I would think that would be a smart thing to do right when they see it, but also letting that quality control guy know just in case sometimes the crews aren't, um, they don't know the faces of the sales reps mm -hmm. as good as the quality control rep. So just like the sales rep has that great rapport with the homeowner, it's vice versa, the quality control reps with the crew. So sometimes the crew might just brush off what you say, um, but you addressing the issue and informing the quality control rep would be two great things to do. Fantastic. And it actually brings to mind the whole idea of both parties working together is that you have you have that collaboration, as we said mm -hmm. earlier, where if I see a thing as the sales rep and you maybe didn't see it, now it gets addressed. If you see a thing as the quality control rep and I didn't see it as the sales rep, now it's getting addressed. It's the idea that more eyes avoid. More eyes and constant communication. Exactly. Um, we are not able to do the volume of installs and take care of as many homeowners as we can and want to do without constant communication between all the employees that we have. You know, we have a big team, mm -hmm. so why not utilize our team exactly. to, to the full efficiency we can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and really, at the end of the day, nobody cares about your project as much as you because you're the one that established that initial contact. You're the one that reached out to the customer in the first place and began that relationship. You should, from a professional perspective, just have the pride in your own work ethic and in your own word to want to make sure that everything gets done better. But, but honestly, it's your money, man. The more we're able to take care of the customer in the most efficient way possible and the less extra money that has to go into fixing things that got broken because nobody was paying attention or uh, cleaning up things because things got scuffed because nobody put a tarp out, the more you take care of those things in advance, the better this job is going to go, the happier your homeowner is going to make and quite frankly, the more commission you're going to make at the end of the project. And as much as I love what I do, part of what I do is get paid to do what I do. Hey, so here's our ladder set up. Three things I see, um, two are good, one is bad. Um, first thing is the gutter protection. As you can see, we have a sponge under the ladder to prevent any dents or scratches to the gutters. Um, then when we jump to ladder safety with OSHA guidelines, um, there's two things. One, the ladder needs to be tied off, which as you can see, the crew has tied it off to the flagpole. Um, this just prevents if there's a sudden wind gust, that ladder blowing over or sliding out from under them. Um, the thing that is wrong is the ladder is only two rungs above the eave edge and OSHA standards require it to be three rungs. So as the quality control rep, this is something you're gonna wanna address with your crew immediately to get it fixed. Okay, so now as the quality control rep, um, getting on the roof, you're gonna be going through your midpoint and all the line items are very specific and labeled out. Um, as far as your decking, um, additional layers, um, all the things of that sort. Flashing, chimney flashing, starter strips, drip edge. These are all line items that we need photos in our midpoint inspection. From a sales perspective, it's important to get on the roof and you should be up here when the deck is revealed. And there's a couple of reasons for that. We'll do some specific training on things that you're gonna look for, but I'll tell you what you wanna watch for. 
The first thing you want to watch for is you want to make sure that you don't have extra layers, which by the way, we have extra layers. So we'll do some specific training on how to deal with that. One of the other things you want to look for is decking. Now listen, you're not the technical expert. So you should be up here with your QC rep and taking his lead on things. He knows what to look for, but there should be extra eyes on the job. Basically, we want to look at a job not like a sieve, but like Swiss cheese. The problem we have is that things fall through the cracks. Well, if QC is looking at a thing, and the crew is looking at a thing, and you as the salesman are looking at a thing, if all three sides, project manager sees it, QC manager sees it, crew sees it, by God, it's gonna get, it's gonna get caught. It's gonna get caught in that Swiss cheese somewhere, and we're not gonna miss opportunities. We're not gonna miss things that need to get done. Come join us up here. Come join the Come Bartlett family us. on the roof. So as the quality control rep, one of the first things you wanna do once you get up on this roof is look over your material order um, and work order. Cross-reference them. Both are gonna point out uh, the brand of shingles we ordered, the line of shingles, whether it's Oak Ridge or Duration, and the color. Um, you check your material order, find out the color, this particular house has aged cedar, so all I do is go come up to the bundles, check that it's Oak Ridge, check that it's aged cedar, and we're good to go. Um, next thing, I'm just gonna work my way down that material order. Um, counting the accessories, see how many we ordered. Um, three box vents, three pipe jacks, two boxes of nails, underlayment, all that stuff. I'm gonna be looking over the material order, seeing how the quantities we ordered, and then double checking that all the material got delivered for the roof. Pro, 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 pro tip. Um, this is super important for you as a quality control rep to, to manage your time and be efficient throughout your day. Because just double checking the material order and finding out as, if everything's on that job site during your first stop is gonna prevent you from having to do a material run at the end of the day. Nobody wants to run to the supplier during four or five o'clock traffic. We're gonna have Michael Ostra and Weston come back in um, and we're gonna go over um, how to tackle this as a team between the quality control rep and the sales rep on the roof. So from a production manager standpoint, you wanna make sure that the color's correct. You wanna make sure that the count is correct. You know how many squares the roof is and you have access to the material order. Count it, make sure it's correct. Are the right accessories up here? And then if you're here and the crew's here, you might want to ask the crew. Very simple. Hey, is there anything you need? Is there anything that didn't get delivered? They'll know. And if there is something that needs delivered, well, then you can send a message to your QC people. Discovering this stuff on your first stop, first time on the roof, is going to be a Bartlett pro tip for you. Pro, 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 pro tip to save yourself an extra material run at the end of the day. The last thing you want is to have to come back. And honestly, the more times you have to come back, the less money you're making on that job. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna walk across this decking. Um, this particular house, the whole front side of the decking looks solid. Um, as we get towards this back side, towards the eave, we see some damaged decking. So these are things the quality control rep you're gonna to wanna to grab photos of, input into that midpoint. Also, bring it up to the sales rep if he's on site with you. So then we can then inform the homeowner and just keep everybody in tune with what's going on. And the homeowner needs to know, which means the project manager needs to be on site. The first time you're on site, you should introduce the homeowner to the QC rep as we talked about before. If the decking hasn't been revealed, you need to come back when the decking is done. If the decking is cleared, you do the second step in the first visit. But either way, you need to be on that roof when the deck becomes clear. Because there's no way you can express to the homeowner what the situation is if you didn't see it. And it should be an expectation of the homeowners that you will be there when the decking was revealed. So I think the most important one is like when the QC rep discovers these or the sales rep, communicating that to them so then we can keep the homeowner on board. Um, and also informing the sales rep, because I know like Adam Rogers does it specifically. Um, he doesn't, we have a supplementing team that does stuff on the back end, but I think some Adam does. It's if he knows this right now, 
he's already on on the phone with his adjuster or whoever he's been working with to get the ball rolling on that supplement. And I'm glad you bring that up, JD, because that is the expectation. Why else are you here? You're the project manager, manage your project. If there is damage that needs to be supplemented, get on the phone with your adjuster. As soon as you know there's a problem, you should be on the phone. If there's damage to the, to the decking surface, which is why you're up here, you need to be on the phone with the adjuster saying, hey, we found non-nailable surfaces on the roof. And let me be very clear on that. We found a non-nailable surface on this roof. And then you need to be getting pictures because guess what your adjuster is going to need? He's going to need to see that it's non-nailable. And that's going to be something we're going to have to supplement for. And if the adjuster knows on install day that that's coming, he's watching for it. And that's going to make it a whole lot easier for scope approval on the backside to get those um, supplements out. And it's going to make it a whole lot easier for the AR team to collect on that money. And well, let's be real. If they're not able to collect on the money, you're not able to get paid on that. Do you want to get paid? Then do everything in your power to help every other department get their job done. Let's go look at this non-nailable surface, JD. Let's tackle it. So another pro tip, pro, 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 pro tip. But I think it's good to point out um, for people that have not walked on a lot of roofs, this decking is old. It, it's still good, but it's a little flimsy. So I think a good pro tip would be to walk on the trusses, which are usually every 24 inches. Now they're not marked, but you just have to use your best judgment. And if you see a, a really weak spot in the decking, don't go step in there unless you want to go through the roof. Can we rephrase that? We don't want to talk about age. Okay. From an insurance perspective, it old is never covered, ever. Yeah. The only thing that is covered is non-nailable when you get to this point. It can't be old, it can't be rotten, it can only be non-nailable. So if you come across, you, saying that, you, it's not old or flimsy, it's, it feels different when it's revealed to the decking. And honestly, you should be walking where the trusses Those are. This guy's on the sales side. Can you see this? It's like <laughs> what I do, right? But it matters. So pay attention to where you put your feet. Stand where the, where the trusses are because, well, that's where it's the sturdiest and it's gonna feel the best to you. But we're not looking for old. Be mindful of where you're stepping mm -hmm. if you can. Yeah. Do your best At judgment to find the trusses and walk on them. As a project manager, especially on your first few roofs, the decking feels different when you walk on decking bare from when you walk on decking that has shingles on it. It's best when it's uncovered to go ahead and walk where the trusses are. The trusses are gonna be typically every 24 inches and you can definitely see the, the lines between the various sheetings. That's where the trusses are, step there. That would be another pro, pro tip. tip from Michael Ostra. <laughs> there you go. Pro, 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 pro tip. So as we're coming over here, um, like we said, the decking on the majority of the house is good. Um, along this eave, we see bad decking. And this is what's gonna be a non-nailable surface. So for us as a company to go ahead and install the shingle up to the manufacturer's guidelines, we need a nailable surface. So this is something we need to address, get the material and get replaced. From a project manager standpoint, you want to get a picture of this because you're going to need to send that picture to your adjuster. As soon as you or the QC man, or honestly the crew identify that you have a non-nailable surface, you need to get up there, you need to get a photograph of it, and you need to be on the phone with your adjuster. We found some non-nailable surface. I'm sending you pictures right now. And Yeah, and that that is an awesome tip or process that we use because us working together, um, both sides of it, um, if the quality control rep and the project manager, us working together, see it together, we can get everything taken care of in a timely manner, which is something our, our crews are big on. Um, yeah. We don't want to leave this house open longer than it needs to be. Um, we want to get as much approval ahead of time as we can. So us working together, discovering the problem and tackling it, it's awesome. And it goes back to the Swiss cheese analogy that I put out earlier. The reality is if everybody is looking at this, then there's very, very 
it's very likely that we're going to get it resolved. If only one person sees it, so we want everybody to see it because then everybody can act on it. And that just makes the process more streamlined. Mm -hmm. Tro, 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 tro tip. When you're taking pictures, this one's right at the eave edge, so I obviously can't get below it. But we keep the camera in landscape mode and we get several nice clear shots of what the situation is because your adjuster is gonna need those. Make sure they tell the story. This surface is non-nailable and we're gonna need a new piece of decking to replace this non-nailable piece. You have to be able to express that to the, to the adjuster. What does QC need to do for this? So as the quality control rep in this situation, um, as you're walking the roof and you discover this, um, obviously like we just talked about, informing the project manager so he can get the ball rolling on his side. On the quality control side, this is something that we're gonna be supplementing for. Um, so getting all the photos that we can um, to document and then knowing how many sheets we need to get um, is gonna be your job. Awesome, so as we get on the roof, um, you'll discover different types of decking. Um, three common ones, you're gonna have your OSB, which is a lot newer, a lot of the newer homes will have that. Um, you'll have the old plywood or CDX, um, or you'll discover plank decking or skip decking. Um, that's gonna be one buys, whether it's a one by six, one by eight, one by 10 across the whole decking, or if it's skip, sheathing, it's going to be one bites that are spaced out about three to four, five inches apart. A note on skip sheathing is that would not be a nailable surface, correct? Correct. And if you didn't know that you had skip sheathing as a project manager, you have failed your homeowner. You should have known skip sheathing was up there when you did your attic inspection before the job got approved. If you're just finding out you have skip sheathing, oh, wow you are way behind the eight ball. And now you've got a lot of work ahead of you. You're gonna need to get solid pictures of it and you're gonna need to have a really long conversation with your homeowner and your adjuster. Because if your homeowner doesn't have- Building code upgrade. Building code upgrade built into their policy, your homeowner is now on the hook for, mm, what's a typical re-roof gonna cost? Right, so again, us teaming up, the quality control rep, the project manager, his side of things, I think he just mentioned it, he's gonna get in contact with his homeowner, find out if they have that BC coverage, that building code coverage. Um, and then as the quality control, we're gonna get tons of photos and not just photos of the gaps. We wanna pull out our tape measure and actually measure those gaps and document those photos as well. That actually brings us to another one. What happens if you get on the roof and discover there's a second layer? Conveniently, this roof, we knew the second layer existed because Adam Rogers, as the project manager, is very thorough and he knew where we had layers and he got pictures of that on the front end. But I'm gonna show you what you do as the project manager when you discover two layers and you didn't know that before you started tearing, tear off. This particular roof has two layers. Now, again, because Adam is very good at what he does, we knew about that and this is already part of the work order. We're being paid to do two layers and fix that. In the event that you get to the tear off and discover a second layer, there are certain procedures you need to follow as the project manager. The first thing you need to do is you need to send a message off to your QC guy. Holy crap, we've discovered two layers. If your QC guy isn't on site, he needs to know coming in that he's got two layers now because somebody's gonna need to communicate that to the crew. Then you're gonna need to get documentation of it because guess what? It costs extra to take off a second layer and we have to have that documentation to get that paid for. And this is how you document it. Right here I have two layers, the top layer and a newly revealed bottom layer. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna clear the debris off enough that on the top layer, you can write a one. And then on the bottom layer, same thing. So you can write a two. 
Then you're gonna get your phone out and you're gonna take pictures. Always in landscape mode. One and two. One and two. And more pictures never hurt. You want as many pictures as you think you're gonna need because as soon as you're done talking to your homeowner about the two layers on the roof, you're now gonna have to call the insurance company and talk to the adjuster about the two layers on the roof. And you're gonna send in pictures so that we can get this supplemented for you. So now that you're on the roof as a quality control rep, going through your midpoint, you've already um, utilized your pro tip, um, went through your material order, made sure the right shingles were there, color was there, um, your accessory count is correct, whether that be the pipe jacks, drip edge. Um, this is just gonna make your life easier for the later in the day. As you're walking across the roof, you're gonna be wanting to look out for problems that have not occurred. Um, a good one is this back patio with these metal panels. Um, we want to make sure, I mean, as you can see, some de debris is going to get on it, but you want to make sure that the crew isn't putting an excessive amount of shingles that have been tore off, or commonly I've seen it, you got to correct it right when you see it, but sometimes crews will try to step on those, uh, which two things will happen. They're either going to dent it or they're going to go right through it. and then we're buying a new metal patio. So you as a quality control rep, you're not just documenting um, all these photos, you're, you're also looking at how to prevent problems or solve problems as they arise. Being proactive. Yeah, be proactive with your job site. Um, take pride in what you're doing. Um, we're a very big company um, and the quality control role is one of the most important roles. Sometimes it gets forgotten about, but you are the eyes on the job site. Now talking about components uh, and making sure we have everything we need, is there anything on the roof that existed already that we're going to reuse? Uh, yes, so as we on this roof, we have a power attic fan. Um, two things we do with those, we usually just detach, reset them, um, or we'll, we're, we will remove them. Um, another thing we commonly reuse is the J vents or bath vents. Um, we typically just remove and reset these and paint them. Um, the things we do replace are always the box vents, always the metal pipe jacks around the pipes, um, and the drip edge. Now what if there's a component on the roof that we plan to reuse and it's made out of plastic? So. If you come across that, that's when it's gonna be your problem solving skills. If you see, commonly it'll be the bath vents, the older ones that are plastic. There is no way to protect those during tear off. So if you do come across one, or even if it's a metal one with a cracked seal, go ahead and grab a photo of that. Let the crew know, hey, I'm gonna run to the supplier. We wanna replace this. Okay. Another thing, super important. Um, we come across a lot of problems is the satellite. Um, this will be pointed out on your work order, whether it's a detach and reset, which means we need to detach it so we can shingle that area and then the crew needs to reset it. Or sometimes homeowners just have old ones they don't use anymore, so your work order will read detach and throw away. Um, in those cases, our crews just take it off the roof, cut the cables, um, make sure the cables aren't flying around the house, make sure they cut it at the right point um, and remove all the brackets. So a common thing you will see is when they remove the satellite, it will just be hanging. Um, typically as the QC rep, you just want to coordinate with your crew that that's the last thing they do and that it's just hanging from the roof for a very minimal time. Um, usually the crew will tear off the entire roof, um, wait to tear off that section until they're actually ready to remove the shingles and paper it. Sounds good. Um, and what about this chimney? So, um, another part of your midpoint inspection will be catching all the chimney flashing photos um, or skylight flashings. Um, when you come across your chimney, first thing you're going to want to do is see if there is current flashing. If there is current flashing and it's still good to go, we can just reuse it. 
Uh, we do require our crews to apply ice and water around our chimneys, um, and that's just to ensure that it's watertight. Um, if you would come across a chimney and the metal flashing was not there, this is something we have to add due to it being code. Um, so you can grab your crew, point it out to them, ask them if they have a plan to add the step flashing or what their plans are, um, and then get as many photos as you can. Um, also goes, same, same goes for skylights. Um, typically skylights will always have flashing, but you just gotta use your best judgment if that flashing is still reus reusable or if it needs to be removed and new flashing installed. Okay. What we're talking about right here as part of the quality control um, position is, we noticed this chimney has flashing, but the old flashing is too small. Um, so between the quality control rep and this crew lead, um, you're gonna want to problem solve and come up with a solution. For this one, um, we're gonna add the new updated step flashing, which as you can see is a lot wider. Um, so the, the crew is gonna have to install this behind the siding. So another common thing you'll run into on roofs is low slope roof. And this is gonna be your zero 12 pitch, one 12 pitch, um, usually back patio. Sometimes it'll be like a dead valley in the middle of the roof. Um, when you come across these, we need to make sure the proper material is being installed up to code. So what that means is uh, anything lower than a 212, so your zero 12s, one 12s, has to be rolled roofing. Um, with that comes uh, a base sheet that needs to be installed and then that cap sheet or commonly called rolled roofing. Okay. Um, when you come across those, same goes, get all the photos you can in your midpoint inspections. Um, just in case on that carrier estimate or exactimate estimate, sometimes they miss it and just will approve shingles. Um, and base sheet, cap sheet, it's pretty expensive. So if we can get those photos and show that pitch and that we needed to install that up to code, we can go ahead and supplement for that. Cool. Um, last thing I wanna to touch on is just, um, if it is applicable in your region um, or the county or city you're working in, some houses require a deck inspection or an ice and water inspection. So when you come across those, say we needed a deck inspection. Um, as soon as that roof's tore off, you're gonna wanna get in contact with your scheduler or production manager. Most of the time, I think it would be the scheduler and let her know, hey, the roof's ready for a deck inspection. Let's go ahead and get this called in. Um, same goes for the underlayment or ice and water. Once the house is all dried in, um, we go ahead and communicate that with the scheduler um, to let them know the roof is ready for that city inspection. Okay, so if the inspection gets done later in the day, does that mean that the crew is gonna have to come back at a different time to finish up the job, depending on what market you're in? Yep, that, that will depend on what market you in, you're in. Um, commonly in Washington, um, it's a very intense uh, screening process with the city inspectors. So the way we do things there, um, we'll tear off that roof, go ahead and dry it in, call in the city inspection and wait to see if they give us any corrections or if it passed. Um, as soon as we get the go-ahead, um, we're free to, between you and the scheduler, to go ahead and reach back out to that crew and let them know the house is good to be shingled. Cool. During your midpoint inspection, a lot of times on your work order, it's gonna say the approved scope of work, whether that's uh, decking that's already approved, additional layers, um, chimney reflashes, skylight reflashes, um, anything not on that work order, if you show up to your install um, and discover it needs to be done, that's when you're gonna need to create a supplement. Um, most common one is gonna be additional layers of shingles. If you run across that, go grab your crayon from your truck, um, get back on that roof. You wanna clearly label those additional layers. Um, this is just gonna prevent any discrepancies with the carrier to get that approved because sometimes it's hard to distinguish how many layers there actually are unless you're clearly pointing them out. Um, once you get those additional layers labeled out, you're gonna wanna get lots of photos and this is when you're gonna input your photos into a supplement inspection form. Now, if there, say there's an additional layer, but we don't get to the install till after it's already torn off, 
Is there anybody else that should be able to get those pictures as well? Or are we the only source of getting that documentation? Uh, nope, the, uh, the project manager, if they've been on site, will also be doing the same thing. Um, if they were on the job site before you got there and discovered them, um, they should be getting photos and then letting you know they discovered this. Um, so then you as the quality control rep can do your part um, to get those photos properly input into a supplement inspection form. Okay. Um, another common supplement is going to be uh, bad decking. Um, if it's a non-nailable surface and we have to replace that decking, we don't just need photos of the old decking. We need the old decking and the new decking installed. And this is to show um, the scope of work that we performed and then that it was actually completed. Now this is all stuff that uh, we're probably gonna have to pay the crew more for as well, right? Yep. So anything that's gonna cost additional labor, additional material that wasn't already approved on that work order or that carrier estimate is gonna be a supplement. Okay. Now how do you create a supplement? So super easy. Um, after you get your photos, you'll go ahead Go to the overview page, you'll see all these tabs. You'll go ahead and click on that inspections tab. It'll bring you to a new page. You hit create inspection. There'll be a list of different inspections. You go ahead and just type in SUPP. It'll automatically find that supplement inspection form. You go ahead and cr click create supplement. And then easy after that. After that, all you've got to do is upload your photos to that form um, and then write a brief description on each light item what the additional work that we found that's needed to be done. All right, and after you input that supplement form, you should also be leaving a note in the notes section. So from the overview page, you can click on that notes tab. Make sure you tag the sales rep. Uh, you can tag your scheduler and uh, your production manager as well if you need to, just to make sure everyone is on the same page about what was found uh, and that we've already got a supplement in place in the documents. So that can be sent to the insurance carrier to help uh, release that money for those additional line items. Now, what is a supplement, JD, in, in layman's terms? Explain it to me like I'm five. Layman's terms. I'll use small words that you'll be sure to understand, you warthog-faced buffoon. So a supplement is anything outside the proof scope of work. Okay. So talking about supplements, from a project manager point of view, from time to time, you are gonna discover things on the roof that you didn't know about. And that's where QC and, and the project manager need to work together to make sure that both, both departments are aware of what's going on. But as soon as we discover that a supplement is gonna be necessary, as the project manager, you should be getting your own set of pictures. Mm -hmm. You should be putting notes in the file that you also are aware of things because more eyes will help. What is a supplement? We talk about that a lot. Um, a supplement is, quite frankly, the job was approved, and now the QC is on the job, and we discovered something we didn't know about. I showed two layers. I showed uh, non-nailable surface or out-of-code decking, skip sheathing, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, these are things that, because we didn't know about it going in, we didn't have the approval from the insurance company. Now, it's your job as the project manager to make sure you get adequate pictures of that. So as soon as QC sends you a note saying, hey bud, we discovered there's a second layer. We discovered out of code. What things could be out of code, JD? Uh, decking, chimney flashings. Mm, okay. um, commonly, if we tear off the roof, mm -hmm. um, the older chimneys, they just don't have step flashing or any type of flashing. Mm, okay. So current codes nowadays, they state we need to add that flashing. What um, about drip edge? Drip edge, yep, another thing that is code nowadays. Okay. Um, some of the older roofs, we go to tear off that roof, there's no drip edge. Um, but as long as the homeowner has that building code coverage as part of their policy, we go ahead and get all the photos we can, install the proper material, and then supplement for that to the carrier just to make sure you're getting paid for everything, all the work being performed on that job. Fantastic. We all know it as a function of the reality is there are three sets of people watching, but as a, from the project management side, you need to assume you're the only one. Right, it's our job. And that's, that's where I want the, the, the project manager to be. Like, it's on him. Supplements, you gotta be there to prove that it got done. PWI, you gotta prove that it was done. If you know, 
how do I say this? If they tear off the roof and you're there during tear off and you see that there are two layers or you see that there are metal valleys or you see that there's ice and water shield because you couldn't see that until it was torn off, you need to get pictures of it because we can supplement for that. There was ice and water shield. That means the insurance company is obligated to put ice and water shield back up there because as of course we talk about in our um, insurance basics, the insurance company is paying for what was there to be put back. So if it was there, you need to get pictures of it so that we can make sure the insurance company pays to put it back. Ice and water shield is a big one. Uh, Metal valleys is another big one. These are things you can't see. There's no universe where you're gonna be able to see that until the tear off occurs. But if you wanna be able to give your homeowner what they had, and that should be your goal, you need to be there. Yeah, and I would say it's just a safe bet to be, it's better to be safe than sorry. You can never have too many photos. Pro tip. Pro, 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 pro tip. What I, what I say regularly to my, to my uh, project manager trainees is, you're better to have the picture and not need it than need the picture and not have it. And I think that applies across the board. The reality is the end goal is always a satisfied customer. The money is a happy side effect of a satisfied customer. So our job then is to make sure that everything is done in a way that the customer can be taken care of properly. And if we do our jobs, all of us collectively do our jobs, we have happy customers and then we have a thriving company. And then we all continue to have jobs. Because honestly, if we don't have happy customers, we don't have a thriving company. And if we don't have a thriving company, well, we're, we're all going to be going back to McDonald's, right? Yeah, you want to flip burgers? Like $16 an hour now. So <laughs> Teamwork makes a dream work. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's a terrible high five. John Cena. Done. So do I want to say like who I am, my position, what we're doing here? Yeah. Do I just keep going? Or? No, you're good. you're good. Yeah, walk me, walk me through this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Bigfoot sighting over here. So, any, uh, stopping. From Q, Q, let me say that again. From Q, Q. Is it flowing good? Shaking and bacon. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> you take this and you tuck it in your pocket. And then you grab your iPad. Small hands, you know what they say. Oh, oh there it goes. There it goes. Oh, no. There it goes.